Hi guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we will discuss the last part of accounting for partnership formation, specifically if one of the partner or the partner's total contributed capital will not be the same to their agreed capital. So in this case, pag-uusapan po natin yung tatlong approach, which is the cash method versus goodwill method and versus bonus method. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, there are some cases that the initial capital of one of the partner may not be equal to his total agreed capital. So, kailan yun nangyayari? So, nangyayari yun in case one of the partner has something to contribute to the company wherein hindi yun na-include dun sa kanyang initial contributed capital. So, pwede kasi yung one of the partner has a special talent or expertise. So, if that's the case, dapat yung total agreed capital niya mas mataas compared sa iba. Then, pwede rin naman siyang large base of customer. So, dahil magkapasok siya ng maraming customer, so meron tayong tinatawag na intangible benefit na pinapasok dun sa ating partnership. If that's the case, most of the time, yung partner na to, binibigyan po natin siya ng special benefit wherein their total agreed capital will be higher to their initial contributed capital. There are three proposed methods that we can use in order to compensate the difference of the total contributed capital of each partner to their total agreed capital. So, we can use cash method. Under cash method, one of the partner or two partners will invest additional cash in order to meet the requirements of the partnership. So, for example, the partnership has... 100,000 total agreed capital on each partner pero yung initial contributed capital lang ng isa is 90,000 pesos. If that's the case, 10,000 pesos must be invested in the form of cash to meet the total agreed capital. So, pwede rin naman po natin gamitin yung goodwill method. Under the goodwill method, an intangible asset will be recognized. So, meaning no cash will be invested. However, the total asset will increase. At the same time, the interest of that specific partner will also increase. Then, pwede rin naman natin gawin no increase on the total asset. However, to compensate the difference of the agreed capital of each partner, pwede po natin gamitin yung bonus method. Under this method, some of the part interest of one partner will go to the other partner by way of giving his interest through bonus. Under cash method, one partner or all partners will add additional cash to meet the capital requirements of the partnership. So these are the considerations, diba? So the total agreed capital daw should be more than to the total contributed capital since one partner will invest additional cash. At the same time, the proposed entry should be debit cash then credit partner's capital kung sino yung nag-invest ng additional cash. So let's have an example. So SIG entire decide to form a partnership with the following investment. SIG cash 40,000, equipment 60,000, tire 80,000, land 80,000, supplies 10,000. So one of the partner is required to add additional cash investment to have an equal interest in the partnership. So before we proceed to the further requirements, so record muna natin yung kanilang initial investment. So for SIG, we just need to debit cash 40,000. Debit equipment, 60,000. Then credit, 6 capital amounting to 100,000. So for third investment naman, we just need to debit land, 80,000. Debit supplies, 10,000. Then credit, third capital, 90,000. So based on their arrangement or based on their agreement, so dapat daw 50-50 sila ng, ng kanilang uh, capital interest. Since they need to be equal, so kailangan pong magkaroon ng cash investment kasi ayun yung pinag-usapan nila. So in that case, ang mag -e invest po, of course, kung sino yung kulang. So sa case natin, ang kulang ay si TARD. Kasi si TARD, 90 lang, tapos si SIC, 100,000. So basically, madali lang yung computation kasi nga, 50-50. So pero para mas maganda yung presentation, so pwede tayong gumamit ng table. So based dun sa table natin, si meron tayong two partners. Si SIC, then TARD. Interest ni SIC, 50%. Si TARD, 50%. Total interest, of course, 100%. Total contributed capital for SIC, 100,000. TARD, 90,000. Total contributed capital natin is 190,000. So, since sabi natin, kailangang mag-add ng isang partner to meet the capital requirement, ang mag-add po, of course, kung sino yung kulang. Sa case natin, ang kulang ay si TARD, so siya yung mag-add. So, para malaman natin kung magkano i-add niya, of course, since si SIC, hindi na siya kailangan mag-a-add, 
So, yung gagamitin po nating basis is yung capital ni SIC. So, si SIC, meron siyang 100,000, so hindi na siya mag-add. Therefore, the total contributed capital of SIC is equal to his total agreed capital, which is 100,000 pesos. So, to get the total agreed capital of the partnership, simply 100,000 divided by 50% to get the 200,000 pesos. Sa case natin, the total agreed capital is 200,000 minus the total agreed capital of SIC. Therefore, the total agreed capital of TARG should be 100,000 pesos. If that's the case, SIC, no need to add additional cash kasi yung total agreed niya equal sa kanyang total contributed. However, si TARG, yung total agreed niya 100, pero yung na-contribute niya nung una ay 90,000. So, he needs to add additional 10,000. So, dahil mag-add siya ng 10,000, the additional cash investment should be 10,000 pesos for TARG. So, basically, to record the transaction, we just need to debit cash 40,000, ay 10,000 rather, then TARG capital 10,000. As you can see, the total agreed capital is more than the total contributed capital. Sa case natin, ang total agreed capital is 200. Ang total contributed capital is only 190,000 pesos. At the same time, yung proposed entry natin, since nag-add si TARG ng 10,000, madadagdagan din yung capital niya ng, ng 10,000. So, ultimatum, yung kanilang, cash in, yung kanilang capital investment ay tag 100. So, na-meet na natin yung agreed capital nila na 50-50. Another method is the goodwill method. So, under goodwill method, partnership will recognize an intangible asset to meet the agreed capital of the partnership. So, the things that we have to remember is that the total agreed capital is also more than the total contributed capital same sa cash method. Sa case kasi natin, although hindi tayo mag add ng cash, however, mag-create tayo ng another asset account in order to meet the total agreed capital in the form of an intangible asset which is goodwill. So, the proposed entry should be debit goodwill and asset account then credit partners capital. So, let's have an example. So, SIC and TARG decide to form a partnership with the following investment. SIC invested cash 40,000 and equipment 60,000. Si TARG naman nag-debit na nag uh, invest ng land 80,000 then supplies 10,000. So, record natin yung kanila mga investments. So, for SIC we have to debit cash 40,000, equipment 60,000 then credit SIC capital 100,000 pesos. For TARG naman, we have to debit land 80,000, then debit supplies 10,000, then TARG capital credit 90,000. So the further agreement is that TARG investment represents 40% of the agreed capital. The excess capital credit to SIC is due to his connection to the industry they will be venturing in. So in this case, so sabi daw, no further cash will be invested. However, uh, intangible asset must be recognized na ibibigay natin kay SIC kasi meron daw siyang ilalagay na expertise or yung connection niya dun sa industry. If that's the case, so ang hatian po natin ay 60-40. So 60 will go to SIC and 40 will go to TARD. So according to our table, SIC 60%, TARD 40%, total contributed capital 100 for SIC and 90,000 for TARD. Ang total contributed natin ay 190,000. Since si TARD, ay 40% ay hindi na magbabago ang kanyang capital kasi ang bibigyan po natin ng intangible asset ay CC. So, si TARG po yung magiging basis natin. So, si TARG dahil 90,000 ang total contributed niya, so yung kanyang total agreed capital will be 90,000 kasi walang magbabago. So, ang kailangan naman natin ngayon kunin, how much is the total agreed capital of the partnership? So, magiging basis natin si TARG. So, 90,000 divided by 40% to get the 100%. So, the total agreed capital of the partnership will be 225,000. So, to get the total agreed capital of SIC, simply minus 225,000 minus 90,000. So, mapupunta naman kay SIC ay 135,000. In that case, kung iti-check nyo po, yung kay TARG, 9090, so ang goodwill niya ay wala. So, zero lang siya. However, kay SIC, dahil ang total agreed capital niya ay 135, Tapos yung total contributed capital niya is only 100,000. No cash will be invested. Therefore, yung remaining amount or yung difference niyan, it will be debited on goodwill, 35,000. Then the total goodwill is 35,000 which is mapupunta nga kay SIC. 
So, to record the transaction, simply debit goodwill, 35,000. Then, credit 6, ca 6 capital, 35,000 pesos. So, ayan po yung goodwill. Kapag chinect nyo po ang analysis, the total agreed capital, which is 225, which is more than the total contributed capital of 190,000. At the same time, yung proposed entry natin is debit goodwill, worth 35,000. Then, kay SIG capital naman ay 35,000. So, pag chinect nyo yung kanilang agreed ratio, 225 times 60%, ang lalabas dyan, 135 para kay SIG. Tapos kay TARD naman, 225 times 40%. Right. The last method is what we call bonus method. Under bonus method, partners will give part of their share to the other partner to meet the total agreed capital. Then other considerations is that the total agreed capital is equal to the total contributed capital since the asset will not be changed. So at the same time, no additional cash nor goodwill will be recorded. Yan. So let's have an example. Sik and Tar decide to form a partnership with the following investments. Cash, 40,000 kay Sik. Equipment, 60,000. Tar, land, 80,000. Supplies, 10,000. So, let's just record the transaction. Debit cash, 40,000. Then, debit equipment, 60,000. Then, credit Sik's capital, 100,000. Then, record natin yung investment ni Tar. Debit land, 80,000. Debit supplies, 10,000. Then, credit Tar capital, 90,000. Since the agreed capital is 50-50, so lagay lang natin yan 50-50. So at the end of this method or at the end of giving bonuses, dapat daw yung agreed capital nila ay parehas, equal, kasi nga 50-50. So gawa natin siya ng table for easy reference. So si SIG 50%, si TAR 50, total natin 100. So ang total contributed capital ni SIG 100,000, si TAR 90,000, total 190,000. Based on bonus method, the total contributed capital should always equal to the total agreed capital. So the total agreed capital of the partnership should also be 190,000 pesos. So to get the total agreed capital of SIG, so simply 190 times 50%, so we have 95,000. Kay TARG, ganun din. 190 times 50%, we have 95,000. In that case, kung i-check nyo si SIG, Ang total contributed niya ay 100, tapos ang kanyang total agreed capital is 95,000, which is less than to the contributed capital. That's the case, si SIG, kailangan niya pong magbawas ng 5,000. So, si TARD naman po, ang total contributed capital niya is 90, tapos ang kanyang total agreed capital is 95. So, kailangan nating dagdagan yung capital ni TARD ng 5,000. So, yung 5,000 na magpupunta kay TARD, Manggagaling yun kay SIC. Yung total bonus natin ay zero kasi magbibigay lang naman po si SIC kay TARG. So basically, the total contributed capital is just the same as the total agreed capital. So to journalize the entry, simply transfer the, the capital of, of SIC to TARG. So basically, we just need to debit SIC capital 5,000, then credit tayo ng TARG capital 5,000. Then transfer mo lang. So, yung total agreed capital, hindi nagbago kasi 190 pa rin naman. Ang nagbago lang po yung capital nila each kasi nga at the end of this method, yung kanilang agreed capital should be 50-50 which is tag 95,000 pesos na lang sila.